Hello everyone, I wanted to do something a little bit different today. A nonprofit contacted me called A Day in a Life, asking me about their website. I checked them out to see what they were about. Basically, they're a documentary project with the goal of showcasing the life and experience of everyday vegans to help reduce the stigma behind being vegan. They had a current website that they felt was pretty outdated and slow, and mostly not mobile responsive. They asked my opinion on it and I agreed with them on their points, but also added in that the font was too big and the translation bar looked a little bit outdated and that a lot could be improved in general. Because I help a lot of Toronto nonprofits out with their websites, I suggested to them a website redesign and they were on board, so I took the project on. They seemed like great, passionate people trying to make a positive difference, so I was more than happy to help them out. This video is going to be about my process of building out the site and some of my thought process on how I built the pages and laid them out. This video is going to be kind of like a inside the mind of a web developer and designer kind of thing. I'll try to explain as much UX and UI decision making as much as possible, as well as some of the web development stuff, like trying to explain the best way to go about implementing stuff and the order of which I do them. So I hope you get something from it, whether it's about design or development. So in terms of the build, it would be a 10 page WordPress website. They specifically wanted WordPress because it's what they're familiar with and they would probably want to edit content themselves, but WordPress is what I would have made it with anyways, so it all works out. In terms of design, they just wanted something that looked modern and to follow their brand colors. For the most part, they just wanted to leave the design up to me because they saw my past work and wanted to trust my judgment. For the functionality, there would only be two major pieces to consider. First was the translation plugin that they had at the top of the page. They wanted the site to support multiple languages, so they wanted the area at the top where people could easily switch. They had an API key for this one plugin they were using, so I pretty much had to stick with it. The other functionality bit was the contact forms. The contact forms on the site were fairly big, so I knew it wouldn't be a hard thing, but more just tedious. The contact forms would be for submitting videos and for the pre-submission survey and another general contact form on the contact page. Overall, the site would probably be around medium sized based off the nonprofit sites I've worked on in the past. I already had some ideas flowing, so I knew this site would be a lot of fun. So let's jump into the build. For the site, I wanted to use a theme called Heal Fio. It's an Elementor theme targeted to be an e-commerce marijuana store, but I felt the theme and the style fit exactly what they were looking for, so I decided to use it. The theme also had the whole plant and nature thing going on, which fits right into the topic of veganism. All I would have to do is change out the images and some text, which I would have to do anyway, and it wouldn't look like a weed shop anymore. If you want to check out the theme, I'll put an affiliate link in the description. The first step was to choose the right homepage template. I chose the one called Home Organic Video because it had a clear hero section, which I'm a big fan of, and it also had the image in the about text row right beneath it, which is something I always have on websites anyway, so it's a great starting point. When I make a site, I always start with the home page and basically make it to the point to where it's almost what the finished page will look like. At some point, I also make the header while making the home page. And for the footer, I always leave that till the end because when you're going to be making all these pages, you're most likely going to have to be keep on updating the footer multiple times. And to be honest, I find making footers a little boring because I usually stick to a very strategic layout for them that maximizes user experience. If you're interested in the footer video, I'll link it in the description. On the original site, they had a video background for the home hero section. I usually don't like video backgrounds. I find they usually take away from the user experience and they also make it longer to load. But I thought because they had this video on their current site, they would also want it on the new site as well. So to download the video, I just viewed the source of the page and I downloaded it directly from there. Continuing on the build, as you can see here, I'm trying to use as many elements from the theme as possible. I often spend a couple of minutes at the beginning of website builds just looking at different elements the theme already has styled out, just so I can compare it to the content, see what fits, and set it up quickly. A lot of times, you're working with text content more than elements like accordions, so that part requires you to actually make your own layouts, which is what I'm doing here. I noticed on the original website, they had a great intro video that explains what A Day in a Life is about. 
So right away, that's something I knew I had to include. So for the About section under the Hero section on the home page, I would use a video instead of a static image. Unfortunately, the video aspect ratio didn't look good and align with the content to the right of it, so I decided to put it in a pop-up instead. This way, I could use my own preview image to customize the aspect ratio. I believe here I used the default Elementor widget to be able to have this pop-up quite easily. So here's what the home page ended up looking like after all that work. I like to think of the home pages as advertisements for all the other pages. It should give users a pretty good idea of all the important content on your website. Each row of content on the home page is kind of like a teaser to other content on the site. So you provide a bit of information and have a button to learn more to go to that specific page. For example, here I have some of the FAQs with a button that links to the actual FAQ page where you can read them all. And of course, always a call to action at the bottom. I think overall it looks great. It sets the tone and style for the entire website, so I had a guide to follow. Even just content-wise, this homepage is a lot more effective than their current homepage, and it just looks a lot better and more modern. Next up, I started working on the team page. Now, team pages usually have bios of their team members. If there are, then the way I think about it is there's an important decision to make, and it's whether to use pop-ups or to use individual pages for their bios. In terms of web development work, I find pop-ups take a bit longer because you'd most likely have to install a plugin and then set up a trigger for each of the pop-ups. With pages, you just have to duplicate the page for each team member and change the content out as you go. When choosing between pop-ups and pages, I base it off of how much content the bios have. If it's a lot of content, then I'll do pages. But if it's not that much, and you know there's just a couple of paragraphs, then I'll use pop-ups. In this case, I only use pop-ups because the bios weren't that long, and they only had four team members. I used a plugin called Pop-Up Maker. In my opinion, it's probably the best pop-up plugin out there. It's fairly simple to set up. The only annoying thing about it is all the pop-ups load on every page unless you specify it not to, which if you don't, will slow down your website, especially if you have images inside of them. Here's what the final team page ended up looking like. It's just a basic team page. Whenever you click on one of their pictures, the pop-up will open. After the team page, I started working on the other smaller pages. Some of them were pretty simple, like the resources page, which was just some text and links. Some other pages I did at this point were the About Participating page. This one was another just informational page, but compared to the original, it's a big improvement. I also did the Terms and Conditions page, the Privacy Policy, and a Contact page. After those pages were done, the site was probably about 80% complete at that point. The only thing I had left to do was the forms for the Submit Video page and the Pre-Submission Survey page. For the forms, I just used Contact Form 7, which is probably the best and most simple contact form plugin out there. And in terms of development headaches, it's also the most popular plugin out there, which means you'll have more add-ons and supporting plugins to choose from. And last but not least, I finished making the footer. Because all the pages were done, I could easily go in at the end and add all the pages and organize them in the best possible way. I don't know if you caught it, but I also linked to my website in this footer. For SEO, Google has some pretty strict guidelines on how to add in agency links for footers. In the footer video I did, I explained how you can safely add them so you can still get that valuable backlink without the risk of doing black hat in Google's eyes. Again, if you want to check out that video, there's a link in the description. Overall, I had a lot of fun making this website. I don't know why, but I just love making green websites. This one was an absolute pleasure to work on. The A Day in the Life people themselves were amazing as well. If you want to check them out, I'll add a link in the description and you can see the live site. If you made it this far, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you all could learn something from this video or at least found it entertaining. If you want to leave a comment requesting a topic, I'll try and cover it as best as possible.